Good science involves looking for patterns in nature. And this is certainly true when we study motion. Now, we've explored the relationship between displacement, time, and velocity using equations. Now, let's look at the same kinds of relationships, but this time using graphs. For example, let's analyze some collected data from a race that happened earlier. Here's the data that was provided for one runner. Now, given this data, what could we do next? Many times, a scientist will choose to graph the data on a D versus T graph to more easily see any patterns. First, let's determine which axis is which. Now, the time was used to establish what data was collected, that is, every five seconds we collected a set of data. So time must be the independent variable and therefore belong on the horizontal axis. For each established time, we collected the measured distance. So we confirm that distance is the dependent variable and definitely belongs on the vertical axis. Now I'll point out that when we deal with graphing motion, time is almost always on the x-axis. Next, we can plot the data. Then, look to draw a curve through it. In our case here, our data is certainly linear, and we can draw a line straight through it like this. Note that the line may not pass through each data point, as we never assume that our data is perfect. The person measuring the distance didn't get it quite right, or the time wasn't yelled out quite loud enough for the measurement to be made quickly, or, well, you get the drift. There are all kinds of things that can make the data imperfect. Given this, we can see that the general pattern in this data is well represented by our line. We are now in a position to look more closely and start analyzing this graph. One of the key characteristics of any graph is its slope. So what does the slope of a D versus T graph represent? Let's try and think this out a bit. We can see that over this five seconds, the person gets further down the track. The further they got in those five seconds, the faster they'd be going. So if they were going really fast, they would get even further in the next five seconds and the slope would be steeper. Therefore, we could suggest that the slope might represent the speed of the runner. Let's consider whether the units of slope are consistent with speed. Since slope equals rise over run, the units of slope would be the units of the rise over the units of the run. So, first, what are the units of the rise? Well, rise is the change in distance in meters. So the units of the rise are meters. Now, the units of the run. Well, run is our change in time in seconds, so the units of the run must be in seconds. So back to the slope equation and recalling that slope equals rise over run, our units for slope must be meters over seconds. The units for slope here being meters per second, and that is certainly a good unit for speed. One last confirmation related to the slope on a D versus T graph representing speed. Since slope is rise over run, again, let's see if we can put together an equation related to this. Again, the rise would be the change in distance in meters. And we remember that another way of writing change in distance is delta d. In the same way, the run is the change in time. And that can be written as delta t, the change in time. So going back to the slope equation, we can put delta D for the rise and delta T for the run. Now taking a good look at this, we should see it as being a bit familiar. Remember that V av equals delta D over delta T. Therefore, the value of the slope is the same as the magnitude of the average velocity, that is, speed. So slope is the same as speed, very conclusive. In this tutorial, we learned that a great way to analyze data is to start with a graph. 
and this is certainly true when working with motion. Often we find useful information in the slopes represented by our data. We were able to determine that the slope of a D versus T graph represents the speed of the object involved. And we verified this by noting that, since the bigger the change in distance for each second means that it's going faster, a bigger slope must represent a bigger speed. Also, when we looked at the units of the slope on our typical D versus T graph, they came out to be meters per second, which is the exact same as the units for speed or velocity. When we recognize that patterns can be shown using either equations or graphs, we compared our former equation, v av equals d over t, and this led us to see that the slope being equal to v av, or speed, is totally consistent with our equation. Certainly, the slope of a d versus t graph represents speed.